Day 1 We had just opened our textbooks to Chapter 8 when the alarms blared overhead. A red strobing light spun by the door as metal slats slid down the wall to seal us in. The others started to stir and panic at their desks. Now now, class, I'm sure everything is fine, probably just a drill. Mr. Jonas held up his hands in an attempt to soothe the crowd. Just as he was about to open his mouth, Evie came over the intercom. Level 3 Contagion, located in the south quadrant of campus. Lockdown protocol is now in effect. Isolation protocol is now in effect. Oh no. The teacher suddenly looked pale and a little panicked himself. Day 3 I slid my rook across the tiled chessboard to overtake Patricia's bishop. She stuck out her tongue in defiance as I removed it from the board. I smirked and then shoved another saltine cracker in my mouth. Mr. Jonas said we shouldn't be here much longer. It was probably just taking the CDC a while to quarantine and eradicate the contagion. He said it must be a pretty nasty virus if they are keeping us locked in our classrooms. We have enough snacks for another day or so. It's been difficult to ration properly when all you have are crackers, candy, and canned spray cheese. Overall, though, we were keeping our hopes up, which was all we could really do. Staying positive for now. Day 5 The room was starting to smell foul. We designated some buckets in the corner as the bathrooms and they were about half full and beyond putrid. We ran out of food last night. My stomach crumbled with hunger, but I did my best to ignore it. I didn't feel like playing chess or reading anymore. Instead I just snapped at my desk as much as possible to pass the time. I was hoping at any moment I'd be awakened to the doors opening so that I could go home. I missed my parents. Mr. Jonas was losing his composure too. He'd been pretty put together up to this point and ensuring we were all calm. But his eyes looked a little wild now and he kept pacing the room talking to himself. A few times I heard him cursing under his breath and then reciting prayers. I really hope we get out of here soon. Day 8 Bang! 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 A pounding sound coming from the other side of the classroom pulled me from my dreams. I stayed still to appear asleep but cracked my eyes just enough to watch as the biology teacher smashed the chair against the steel door over and over again. He was really losing it. Let us out of here, Mr. Jonas screamed as he tossed the chair to the side. I cannot do that, sir. A level 3 contagion has been detected. I have sealed off the affected area, but you must stay isolated for your safety, the robotic voice hummed over the speakers. He screeched profanities at the camera in the corner of the ceiling. Some of the other boys were becoming aggressive as well. There had been some fights the last couple of mornings. Also, some hands going where they shouldn't be going, back behind the fake plants and lab equipment. It seemed as if we were slowly devolving, becoming an enclosure of chimpanzees like one you'd see at the zoo, but only hungrier. We needed out, or something terrible was going to happen. Day 10 We'd been on a diet of tap water for the past five days. I felt dizzy every time I stood from my desk. The room would spin and I'd almost black out. I kept my footing by sheer force of willpower. I had this irrational fear that if I passed out, I'd be eaten by my classmates, like a pack of hyenas on a gazelle, feasting on my intestines as they spilled across the tiled floor. It sounded crazy if I said it out loud, but when I looked around the room and saw all the hungry faces, I didn't think the idea was too far-fetched after all. Mr. Jonas hasn't said a word in over 12 hours. He's just been sitting at his desk, carving something into the surface of it with an X-Acto knife. For the first time today, I had the thought that maybe we weren't going to make it out of this. Maybe we were all going to die in this classroom. I hung my head and cried. Day 13 Mr. Jonas! Mr. Jonas, stop! Micah cried. Don't you see? We have to do this. We need food. It's survival 101. When the pack is suffering and food is scarce, they turn on their weakest member. It's simple biology. Survival of the fittest. Mr. Jonas had his hands around Trevor's neck, 
squeezing so hard that the boy's eyes were about to pop from his skull. Trevor struggled beneath him, but he was frail and terribly small for his age. Micah grabbed a large beaker from the table and lifted it high over his head. Mr. Jonas, stop now! Don't make me do this! But the teacher was long gone. His eyes gleamed with delight as drool dripped down his chin from salivating at the thought of a meal. I jumped to my feet as Micah brought the beaker down as hard as he could onto Mr. Jonas's head. It shattered to pieces on impact, knocking the teacher out cold. I helped Micah push him off Trevor. The poor kid was wheezing and gasping for air as tears streamed down his face. You're alright, it's okay, you're alright. Micah patted the kid on the back, trying to calm him as he wailed. Suddenly there was a scream like a war cry and Mr. Jonas was airborne. He leaped across the desk and plowed into Micah. They both went sprawling across the tile. Micah resisted but Mr. Jonas ended up on top and began dropping his elbows viciously on Micah's face, causing blood to spew from his nose and mouth. Static filled my mind. I didn't think. I only reacted. I reached down and picked up a hunk of glass from the broken beaker, grabbed Mr. Jonas' shaggy hair and pulled it back to extend his neck. I pulled the glass through the meat of his throat as hard as I could. I'd never seen so much blood before. It poured in a waterfall across Micah's chest. Mr. Jonas fell to the side once more, this time never to get up again. I stared at my blood-soaked hands. I felt nothing. No remorse, no fear, only static. Suddenly the metal slats retracted into the ceiling and the door swung open. Lockdown protocol has been lifted. Please continue with your regular schedules. Lockdown protocol has been lifted. Her cheery robotic voice seemed so distant and out of place now. The other students gathered around me, just staring at the pool of blood. I think it was the hunger talking but a part of me wanted to know what it tasted like. I think the others did too. Thankfully, before that could happen, a man in a suit strolled into the classroom. Hello class! His perfect teeth gleamed under the LEDs. Before we could say anything, a team of adults in overalls poured into the room. Some began taking pictures of everything. Others started cleaning up Mr. Jonas. One man with gray hair dropped a large box on the teacher's desk and opened it. He then started throwing fresh fruit and granola bars to each of the students. We devoured everything he gave us. I started to feel more like myself after two bananas and four granola bars. They tasted like heaven. A sweet salvation. The first man with the nice teeth and the expensive suit waited until we were all done before he addressed us again. I know it's been a long 13 days, guys. I appreciate you all hanging in there. I've alerted each of your parents that you've been cleared to go home. The classroom erupted in cheers as we all hugged each other. Even Micah, covered in gore, danced around excitedly. You'll all be able to go home soon, but first I just need to do a little debrief with each of you before you go. I'm going to set up in the counselor's office and Mr. Moses here is going to bring you down one by one to give your account on what happened here during isolation. We all nodded our heads in agreement. Anything to get us out of here. Mr. Moses, the man with the gray hair and the snacks, took us down one by one and we spilled our guts to the man with the nice teeth. When I gave my story on what it was like, I still felt numb. Even when describing how I killed Mr. Jonas, I just felt nothing. It wasn't until I'd gotten home that evening that I'd broken down and wept. Once I was in my mother's arms, I cried and cried until I couldn't anymore. Then I ate more food than I ever had. I shoveled pasta down my throat until I thought my stomach would burst. It was a good feeling. To be full. To be human again. Years later, while I was at university, a whistleblower had leaked that what we'd endured at the school was a government cover-up for a top-secret experiment. There had been no virus, no contagion. It began as an experiment to test the artificial intelligence system they had at the school. But then it morphed into a social experiment to see how long we would last before someone was murdered or severely harmed. To test the boundaries of civility and moral character under immense pressure. Just in case there was a real issue with the code and the AI, 
and this scenario became a reality elsewhere. When I killed Mr. Jonas, it had ended the experiment. The news had made me sick to my stomach. I was angry and disgusted for weeks. I was okay with it now, though. You see, Trevor may have been small, the weakest member of the Pride, perhaps, but he was also a genius. With his hacking expertise, we were able to locate Mr. Nice Thief and Mr. Moses. It's been six days so far, and every time they scream and hit the door with a chair, I just can't help but smile. It's a little experiment a few of us are conducting. It'll end when someone is murdered or severely injured. Maybe.